I'm riding home on my Brompton and I'm so excited because it's new bike day. It's the Egwe P20. Let's see some of the things that got me excited even before I received it. It has a carbon belt drive that requires no maintenance and it lasts several times longer than a chain and it's completely silent. It has integrated head and tail lights so you can be spotted in traffic day or night. It's got built-in indicators so you don't need to use your hands for turning. It comes standard with a rear rack to carry panniers. It's got a hundred kilometers claimed range which is more than most people need on a day-to-day -day basis. Hydraulic disc brakes are on board for amazing stopping power and modulation. Unlike most other bikes in the same price range, it has a torque sensor that makes pedaling feel natural and the ride is a lot smoother. It folds small and it's relatively lightweight so you can carry it with you into the office or easily put into a car. We're going to address all of these features because if this bike is as good as it promises to be, it could pose a serious threat to my Brompton that I have been riding for the past six months almost exclusively. As a bike commuter, I approach the bike from a practical perspective. I don't sit on the bike and go, wow, this is an amazing bike, before I actually try it and make sure that I am familiar with it. So I have been using this bike for about a week now and I found some of its limitations to be too annoying. But you be the judge. Unfortunately, my bike had a manufacturing defect and it took way longer to get it up and running than it should have. I'm about to show you some footage of the assembly. Unfortunately, my file got corrupted because the camera ran out of battery while I was recording. So I had to use a recovery tool, but it's important for you to see it. The skewer installed in the front fork got stuck and took a good 15, 20 minutes to take off. Take a look at this. My finger fits in the right fork, but not in the left one. This is a massive quality control issue and potentially quite dangerous too. And I had to use an angle grinder to install the front wheel. The front fork had been bent and it was completely deformed. So I want to be fair to Engwe. It doesn't seem to be an issue reported from other users. And I think I just had a bad luck with the faulty unit, but it was still quite annoying. When I reported it to them, they apologized and they offered me to send another one. Of course, you kind of expect that when you want someone to give you a good review of your product, but I trust that they have a good customer service and they take care of such issues. Now, as a result, the wheel is not aligned properly and the disc is rubbing against the pad, the brake pad, and it's quite annoying. Let's put this all behind and give them the benefit of the doubt and consider everything else about this bike. And let's talk about the good stuff first. The build quality of the P20 is rock solid. The bike doesn't wobble and you can feel that they didn't want to save money on components. The hinges are sturdy and the latching mechanisms work great both in the middle and at the handlebar. There are a lot of good things in this bike. But for me, three things stand out as really impressive. The first one is the motor. The motor is only a 250 watt hub motor, which is surprisingly strong and it performs exceptionally well. The EU version comes with a 25 kilometers per hour speed restriction and the throttle only assists you up to walking speed, probably about six kilometers per hour. But this restriction can be lifted and you can ride in throttle only mode up to 32 kilometers per hour and pedal even faster. I found it easy to get up the hill where I usually get off my Brompton to avoid too much sweating. The second one is the torque sensor. Riding this bike feels just so natural. It's not jerky and the power delivery is very smooth. You don't notice the motor kicking in when you start pedaling and you don't feel it stopping when you stop pedaling. The third thing to highlight are the brakes. The brakes are amazing. This is probably the best thing about the bike. My Brompton has great brakes compared to many of my other bikes, but this one stops at an instant. I'm really, really impressed. No squeak, no wobble, just instant bite. 
If I could highlight just one thing that I love about the bike the most, it would be the brakes. But besides these highlights, there are other things that are really good about the P20. For example, it's surprisingly fast to fold. I can fold it and be ready to push it within a few seconds. It doesn't fold as small as a Brompton, obviously, it's a bigger bike, but it's small enough so I can take it with me to the office and leave it at the desk. One thing that is actually genius about this bike is this magnet here. When you close the bike, this magnet attaches to the rear magnet and it holds the bike together so you can actually push the bike around without it unfolding on you. The bike also has grippy 20 inch Kanda tires. To keep the bike compact, they're not as fat as some other bikes in this 20 inch tire category, but they do offer some cushioning for minor imperfections on the road. The bike can be adjusted for tall and small riders quite easily. Not only the saddle height, but also the handlebar height. You can make the bike completely upright or completely forward leaning. The standard grips are ergonomic and very comfortable. The kickstand comes standard with the bike and it's sturdy enough. I really like the understated yet functional display, which gives me all the info that I need and none of the info that I don't need. It's small enough, so it doesn't occupy a lot of real estate on my handlebar. The carbon belt drive is smooth and completely silent. I know this is a big selling point of the P20 and it's one of the few bikes in the sub 1000 euro price range that comes with a carbon belt. This is the first bike I own with a carbon belt drive and I really like it. Too bad that there is noise coming from the brake pads. But honestly though, not having a carbon belt drive would not have been a deal breaker for me and you will see why. The built-in lights are very welcome. I appreciate that they didn't only give us the front lights, but also the rear ones. Not only that, but we also have integrated brake lights as well as indicators if you want to turn left or right. It's not vital, but it's a thoughtful touch. Now, Angwe claims that you can do 100 kilometers on a single charge. It's about 60 miles, but that's way overstated. This battery is way too small for you to do so much. Maybe if you're a tiny child and you're riding at a moderate pace with no heels, you might get something like 100 kilometers, but I think about 30, 40 kilometers is realistic for most people. Not everything is perfect though, and sometimes I get the feeling that those who designed the bike are not regular cyclists themselves. They're more like geeks who wanted to put a lot of good things into the bike but they forgot about practicality in some ways. Well, here are the things that I find annoying and we start with the smaller issues. First of all, the ride is quite stiff on rough roads due to the small wheel size and the lack of suspension. This is not like a big complaint I have, but an observation. To keep the bike small and lightweight, they had to sacrifice comfort a little bit. The front light is decent, but the rear lights on the bike are not powerful. They are visible at night, but they're not very useful by day. Since they're located close to the ground, they're quite hard to spot and the brake lights are a good additional feature, but it's hard to notice the difference when the rear lights are on. The indicator of the P20 is questionably useful. If they wanted people to use the indicators, why did they place it in such an awkward position? You have to reach in all the way with your thumb. And besides, when I turn it on, there is no way for me to see whether it's on or off. There is no audible feedback. There is no tactile feedback nothing you don't see anything blinking on the screen and besides you can barely notice that it's blinking now in theory it's nice but the execution is very poor and we've arrived at two of my biggest problems with this bike which make it unuseful for my commute and i think for many others too first it's the rear rack. It's such an amazing idea to equip your commuter bike with a rack, but what use is a rack that's so dinky that it can't hold a pannier? 
Also, it's so close to the saddle post and the pedal that even if you could mount something on it, there would be no room for your heels. Plus, because of the small wheel size, a bag would also be in danger of touching the ground. So what did I end up doing when I rode it to work? I used the backpack, which I haven't done in a long time because my Brompton has its front rack. But my biggest gripe with this bike by far is its gearing. Now the carbon belt is paired with a rear hub motor, which means it's a single speed bike. You can't change the gears and you're stuck with the gear ratio that it was designed with. And the gear ratio is outright ridiculous. It feels like you've reached your comfortable pedaling speed at 23, 24 kilometers per hour. And at 25 kilometers per hour, your cadence is becoming so high that you start working up sweat, not because of the effort you're making, but because of the speed and cadence at which you're pedaling. They could have easily given the bike a higher gear ratio with the strong motor. Guys at Engwe, thank you for the bike, but please, please, please sit on it and use it with its intended use. Or ask people who are your target customers what they really appreciate in a bike before you start manufacturing one. These two things could have so easily been avoided. Despite all of its shortcomings, I don't think it's a terrible bike. My wife loves it. She doesn't use it for commuting, but only for leisure and riding around the block. Sometimes she rides with me to the ice cream shop and for that it is great. But it's not the practical urban commuter that I was expecting. For a thousand euros you're getting a lot of bike and an interesting one too. But if you're looking for a commuter, consider whether you can live with an undergeared bike and if you don't need to carry stuff or you don't mind carrying a backpack, go for it. I had a chance to test and use the Engwe EP2 Pro last year. It lacks a torque sensor and it's a less sophisticated bike overall, but in my opinion it's a lot more practical commuter. You can check out the video that I made about it here and I'll see you in the next one.